life will always bring you on a roller coaster ride. I'm navigating through each and every day and loving what is and what the future may hold. My past has given me amazing memories and untold stories, and at times feeling of worry and hardship, which I now see as part of my life journey. Remember, show up, and if you fail, that's okay. Tomorrow will bring a new day and new ideas. I've had the privilege to spend time and interview some amazing leaders over the years. As they share their stories of life and business, I find out what makes them the people they are. I'm honored to share their stories with you. Are you being authentic and unique in everything you do? Or are you living a life that others expect of you? It's time to step up and shine. Be the real you, stir that great awakening inside and trust the process. Want to know how you can do this? Go to joedalton.ie forward slash discover. On this week's show, we have Simon Haig. Simon, an author, entrepreneur, consultant, Marshall Goldsmith certified coach, keynote speaker, trained mediator, and lecturer in deal-making. Simon's experience has shaped his expertise, which is centered on helping organizations grow through growing their leaders. Simon has a diverse 25-year international experience over three continents, five countries, and a number of industries. If you would like to be a sponsor of Breakthrough Brands, please contact joe at jdc.ie. Welcome to Breakthrough Brands. It's great to be here. Great to see you again, Joe. You have so much knowledge and you have so much experience. Where do you get it all from? The knowledge or the experience? Both. Both. Uh, Well, life, right? And I, I guess for me, a lot of my life hasn't been planned other than the initial drivers in my life were fear. Right. So, for example, I ended up qualifying as a lawyer back in the UK 26 odd years ago, uh, effectively to prove my parents wrong, that I could do something. You know, I, I plucked a career that I thought was the coolest, most prestigious career out of the sky and I went for it. And so I did it to try and pe- people please others. You know, were you pushed in because you felt it was the right thing to do? A bit of both. Because right? yeah. my parents didn't really express any opinion, but it's what I felt, what my ego or probably lack of self-esteem, said to my, my inner voice, that's what they would like to see of their son, you know? At the end of the day, they never ever said, we want you to do this. So as far as I can remember back, I was driven by fear. I don't know what that fear was. It was a mix, it was a miss up, mix mash of fear of failure, but also fear of success. So I went down this journey of a certain career, and it's funny, you know, I had a really empowering conversation just before this, um, about it's own I'm 52 this year right and it's only this year only this year and I've lived in five countries done all these wonderful things failed businesses successful career and all this stuff it's only this year I'm starting to realize what I want to do what I'm good at and how uh, what I do might be of assistance to others and I don't think that's unusual but it's been quite a journey so to answer your question that's why I've had all this experience and knowledge because I've done a lot you know Without a lot of rudder. Yeah, a couple of things going back to childhood and why. If you look at a lot of people who leave school and they go into college and they're pushed into the trends, do this, do this because yeah. of the trends. And I think then after a while, if someone leaves college or jumps out, it's and people go, oh, why did you do that? That was a great job. Because it wasn't resonating with them. Yeah. And I think value and looking at your own internal values Absolutely. is important. And even yeah. with our teenagers and bringing them in. Absolutely. And that journey that you, you that you're talking about, I think you get to the stage, you release the blockages. You do, you do, and you get out of yourself, and it's such a relief. You know, it's amazing. You know, I've just I've just had a communication from somebody saying, "Should we sit? Should we now put to, try think about putting together a program to inspire teenagers?" And you've just said it right. It's only this year I've been thinking about that, and it's starting to manifest itself. And you know, I was a lost teenager, and but so many people are lost. We all are. We're so lost, you know. And yet, and yet, you know, you hear from twelve-step programs and all these sort of programs that 
what we really, what all of us really need is that little pinch, pinch, a little granule of hope, right? You know, all of us have ups, all of us have downs, but that granule, that little grain of hope is the key, right? And I, for me, it's been, a, it's been a huge, long journey. But I have to say, you know, meeting you back in November and uh, meeting a wonderful man who we both know, Joseph Maguire, at his book launch, I think that was Octoberish time. Yeah, yeah. Right. A lot of things have been – it's been like a Venn diagram since then. I've been doing a lot of thinking, been, re, been meeting some people I never thought I would meet with, you know, and it's kind of been washing through me, you know. So it's, it's – you're ready when you're ready. Here's the thing, right? And you <laughs> said that they're serving people. If you ask someone about why do you do what you do, because I want to help people. And my answer then, I say to them, well, if you want to help people, why don't you come Mother Teresa? Yeah, I agree. Right? And they go, oh. So a lot of people, we say that we help people, but – in a way, we want to help ourselves because there's ego sitting in it. Correct. And a, a very good friend of mine, Les, was the one that said it to me. And he said, things changed for him when he realized that he wanted to no longer help people for his own ego, yeah. but it was to serve others and left it at that. And that's yeah. when everything changed in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where I think that we are. Once we get to the stage that we don't care about ourselves. You had a very successful um, watch company. Yeah. How did that shape you to who you are now? That's a huge journey in itself. And I haven't actually spoken about that watch company since. And so that was one of my entrepreneurial failures, effectively. But I've learned a huge amount. So the, the, the company was called Hagen Hastings. It was a great brand. Um, we launched it about five years ago. It, it, it moved probably too quickly, you know, and for me, my name was in that company. So my ego, but also my lack of self-esteem, because, you know, it's like a seesaw. There's ego. A lot of successful people, a lot of successful entrepreneurs have, and psychopaths <laughs> have, high, <laughs> have high ego, <laughs> but low self-esteem. And that was always me. I had this almost deluded ego, but low self-esteem. So to have my name in that, the ego rocketed up, but my self-esteem wasn't quite there. So, of course, it was going to fail, you know, and it failed for all sorts of economic reasons and people involved and stuff. But the way I want to answer the question is… Push, you know, pull. Yeah. And and I, I should have committed more to it and I got involved with too many other things, et cetera, et cetera. And that was ego, thinking I've launched this, but I can do all these other things. What I've the real learning for me was out of the failure. You know, I lost some money on that business, and for about a year afterwards, my first year back here in Ireland, beginning of last year, my head was all over the place. You know, I wanted to go over and deal deal with people. I didn't know who I was. I thought I was a failure. All these kind of things, but because I allowed that to sit, and I took some advice from some really good spiritual friends. You know, and you know, initially I was filled with anger, and I thought I'm going to sue people and all this. No, I'm not going to do that. I had equal part in that. I was equally to blame for failures and stuff. So once you – once, but it forgiveness. takes – Forgiveness. It's self-forgiveness, right? And you have to forgive – you have to forgive everybody. You have to forgive yourself and others because if you don't, somebody's – you know, I, I thought about lawsuits and all this stuff and somebody said to me that would be akin to almost voluntarily putting cancer in your body, you know. Why would you do that? Even if you could win, imagine the hassle and the strain and the aggro you're putting through yourself – Think positively, Simon. It's easier said than done. So that's probably one of the biggest learning incidents in my life. A, a failed business. Yeah, but look, it's, you know, it's, we've we've had lots of failures in our lives and they're the ones that mm. make us strong. Yeah. I've learned now that behind every thought, behind every decision, it's either got to do with fear and love. Yeah. And that fear is feeling, oh, what's my name, my reputation, that person hurt yeah. me, I'm going to get them back. Correct, correct. And you sort of just kind of go, so what? So what? Yeah. So what? And I think what you were saying before, what I didn't get to say was, y yes, it's all well and it's great being of service to others. But and, and I'm trying to feel this now as I'm saying it. But for me, I have to feel that I'm being of value to me first. Like if I'm being of value to me, I can then really be of value or could be of value to others. doesn't mean I'm going to be. No. But if I'm not of value to me, it's pointless, right? It's only now at 51 am I realizing this. But here it is, right? <laughs> You're only of value and you only help people when they ask for it because everyone is on their own journey. Absolutely. Mm. It's interesting. There's a hotel. You, you, listeners can Google this and I can't remember the name, but there's a hotel in India. And it's on. There's an article on Google and it's, 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 it sounds a bit distasteful, but it's a place where terminally ill people go 
to, to check into this nice hotel, posh hotel in India, and effectively they die there. And the owner of it, so you can Google this, and the owner interviewed a number of them, all you know, with full consent, and they're all compass mentors, and asked them the top ten things they regretted. And these are people who are about to die, and the the one thing that came top of the list more than anything else was we. I, I wish I'd asked for help more in life. Mm. That's people on the deathbed. Yeah. So th- we should be taught this at school. Ask for help. It's, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it is. It's ask for help. Mm. And for me, it's, and I'm realising now, is spend more time with my family. Yeah. You and me are you and me are on a spiritual journey, and we understand, and we that. understand that. And you got there a little bit ahead of me, a little but- bit ahead of you, <laughs> a little skipping ahead of you. Yeah, and I'm younger than you. It's finding that true essence of who you are, and when you have that, nothing else matters. As in, you get it, you get it, you truly get it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's very empowering. You can't take it for granted, though. You have to work at it. I feel that. Yeah. Um, and conversely, I feel. And you know this better than I do, I think, because you've, you've been in this space longer. I feel there's a bit of responsibility involved as well because – and I've seen it in certain areas. You you can get a bit – the ego can come in as well on this and you can get a bit evangelistic. And I don't think that's helpful it's, either. No, it's, it's, no, that isn't because that is <laughs> – And people then, see through that. Yeah, it's, it's that is kind of uh, I'm doing this because I'm great. And there there is that wave – that you there have. Is. I know now. I absolutely know now. Yeah. And in knowing, yeah. it's wonderful. And you also feel that when you know it and you're not trying to prove it, others are attracted to it, right? Mm-hmm. But again, you then have a responsibility not to abuse that. So it's a never-ending virtuous yeah, or yeah. a vicious cycle. Yeah. yeah. You're creating. Yeah. So in knowing what you know yeah. and with the experience. More that, feeling. <laughs> the, the feeling. And then the experience that yeah. you've had as your life meandered. Yeah. A true businesses and two yeah. different countries. And now you sort of say at 51, God, if I knew what I knew now 10 years ago, life would have been brilliant. But it's, no. your journey is your journey. You have to have gone on that journey. Yes. Yeah. And people say, do you have regrets? Kind of in that, you know, you could have made better decisions, but there's no point. I don't think on the, I don't think any of the answers to those 10 questions were, I regretted doing this. It was, in fact, they were all in the opposite. There was, I wish I'd done that. You know, like a lot of people want to know what is their life purpose, and they yeah. think this. Or do you know if you if if we were here and we went out down into the shopping centre here, and asked people, uh, what's your definition of success? <laughs> They'd all give yeah. you different answers. They would, yeah. So it's all defining on yeah. what it is. I think contentedness. I'm not talking about happiness here because that's. I think I'm content. That's that's the point, right? I feel content today. You know, there are days when I feel a bit edgy or a bit nervy, but as long as you're feeling like. To be frank, if I could feel like I'm feeling right now having this chat with you for the rest of my life, I'd die a happy man. Yeah. That is a symbol of contentedness. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's 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 open and <clears throat> opening your mind and your heart to just accepting who you are. Exactly, yeah. and where you are. You can always get fitter, and if you want to improve your looks, you can do all these things. But they're additional things, you know. It's just, are you happy with the essence of you? We spoke about your past yeah. and your journey to where you got now. Yeah. Where are you now in life? Uh, experiences some amazing journeys and conversations and breakthroughs. But from a putting bread on the table perspective, mm-hmm. I've got a business called GCM Advisory, which is a straightforward consulting strategy business in Australia and here. And then sitting underneath that, I... Given the experiences I've had through my career around helping companies, you know, I've been legal counsel for – I was the first legal counsel for Dell here in, in Bray and Cherrywood and uh, I, I was the first European counsel for Xilinx, a um, uh, mobile phone chip company based here in Dublin. And I've been a CEO for an in, the world's largest indigenous-owned business from Alaska but in Australia. I've done all these things. I set up GCM six years ago. I've invested in companies. I've done all sorts of things. Um, and I guess the one common thread through my career has been putting together deals or helping other people put together deals or business growth or business development. So somebody said to me about four years ago, you should write your life recollection, recollection of all these deals you've done for big companies in your own company. And I thought they were mad. And then 50 pages just poured out of me. And what came out of that was a, a methodology, what, what I called the 7P methodology of, of deal making. Whether you call it deal making, driving business growth, mastering complex negotiations, whatever. It's the whatever, same yeah. stuff. Yeah. 
so I wrote that four years ago, moved back to Ireland three years ago. Um, to cut a long story short, I got the world's number one leadership thinker who I know you've interviewed, and I think you've, you've interviewed him, Marshall Goldsmith. Yes, I have, yeah. Uh, quite an amazing guy. He wrote the forward to that. I then got back to Ireland uh, and I wrote the paperback, How to Be a Better Deal Closer. And so that's – we'll talk about that in a second. But what I really love doing is helping organizations – and this is the core of what I'm doing – is helping organizations grow but at the same time and they're inextricably linked is helping the people within those organizations grow. And so – so, for example, there's loads of consultants who go into companies and put structure and process in place, but they don't really look at the human issues within the company. And conversely, there's loads of life coaches, but they don't really look at the structure. They're inextricably linked. You know, a healthy company has healthy people and vice versa. So that's what I do. A company is a living organism. Yeah, it's people. Yeah, not a not a flashy website with no, a beautiful stock photograph. Yeah, And within that organization, everyone has emotions yeah they're you know some are having good days some are having bad days yeah um and it's for you as to as i call it and one of the things is conscious leadership so getting yeah. the people at the top yeah i love that phrase conscious leadership. you know li- li- living yeah what would you say a couple of the biggest issues that you find when you go into an organization it's it, because they all look we're both consultants yeah and we find i find People have the same. A lot of people have the same issues all yeah. the time. Yeah, and probably is that because they they resonate towards us because we know what those issues are. Yeah, yeah. What would you feel are the biggest issues? So there's so many ways to answer that, but what's coming out most recently, and and my feeling and my experience is that there's just such a deep lack of self self and situational lack of self and situational awareness within businesses so the businesses are really lacking self awareness uh, and situational awareness but the people in the business aren't either allowed to or they're not fostered to really look at themselves when they come into the office each day and also look at others. And I feel passionately about this, you know, and I'm now in discussions about maybe working with younger generations is we, we never taught this stuff at school. You know, when you walk, as you said before, as you walk into an office and people do this every day at work, right? They come into an office and their demeanor changes and um, they don't think in terms of how am I coming across? How do I feel? So the self-awareness, how, wh- wh- where am I at with this? How are my colleagues feeling? They're not really connecting at that level. The biggest issue, what they have is caring, yep. fear, yep. and saying what they feel wants to be told instead of saying what needs to be told. What they think they should be saying. Yeah. yeah. So I see it so many I business. think this is a great idea. Why do you think it's a great idea? Because everyone else thinks it's a great idea. Yeah. And then when it falls aside, well, I, you know, I didn't think it was a great idea, but yeah. I just went along with everyone. No, there's such fear in corporates, you know. And one of the great things for me, I mean, I've spent my life in big corporates, but now, you know, I work for myself. Yes, it's hairy, scary working for yourself. But if you, if you get over yourself, you don't have those fears. You say you, you can say and think what you want to, but I, you know I go into company. I won't mention it, but I went into one big consulting company. Did a, a one day program there around, you know, having the confidence to close deals and stuff. And for the first two hours, nobody said anything. These are senior managers in the, one of the world's biggest companies. And as soon as a boss left the room, they all opened. There's almost like a perpetual, never end, constantly perpetual through every generation. There's this almost self expectation that you need to be in fear at work. Where it's worked, the opposite is, you know, for one good example of the opposite is Apple. Right? Apple, I think, around the late 90s was in trouble, right? And it, it was losing its identity. And some genius within the company, I can't remember whether Steve Jobs was still there or not, decided to give a, a bunch of engineers six months to go away and think of think of something. And the iPad, iPod was invented, you know, and the rest is history. So that company didn't have fear to allow them six months. How many companies do that? Yeah, you know? but here, yeah because what it is is it's – empowering your staff and trusting them to know that they'll make the right decision. Yeah. And how does that happen? 
by getting them to believe yep. in themselves and Correct. the organisation. Correct. But if you get them to do this yep. with fear base, yep. you'll get no results yep. or you get crap results. Yep. So yep. there's an element that needs to be put in place yep. before you can send them out yeah, to do that yeah, work. Yeah. And, you know, having, and, and you work in this space as well. Having said all this, it doesn't actually, it, I'm amazed when I, I did a session about eight weeks ago in Shannon, down in Shannon with a really, this was a, an example of a company that, that's, that does it well. You know, you had nine executives there from across sales, marketing, finance, risk, insurance. And again, it was a two-day driving business growth program. And I couldn't tell which end of the dynamics they were at, whether it was a fearful organization or whether it was a collaborative organization. It was pretty collaborative, you know. I mean, you know, sales didn't disrespect legal. Legal knew what sales were doing. It was really, really rewarding deep, honest conversation between between all of them in this two days. And at the end of the day, I didn't really have to facilitate much. They were chatting on, you know. Going in and you understood, that's an enigma at the moment. I think yeah, where yeah. you and me want to go in the future is get that collectively going in a lot of organisations. That's what I was coming to. I don't think it actually takes as much as people would imagine for, to, for that tip. It doesn't. Why? It doesn't. Because they're already living it possibly outside the organization. Yeah, absolutely. And we have to bring those thoughts into That's it. That's exactly right. All human beings, okay, there are some psychopaths and there are people who don't, you know, need some help with emotions. But we all feel these things. Like you, you, when you walk in a room, you, you have a sense as to whether you, you're attracted to somebody or whether you feel a bit tense with them. And when we leave the office, we all have that whew, sigh of relief. I can be human again. So we have all that. We just need to bring that to work. Having said all this, companies need to make money. So they, you know, there need to be rules and there needs to be a funnel. Yeah, it's within. not all airy fairy. No, it's not. It, it, it's like people go, oh, I, you know, meditate or, you know, I have, I have a connection with my own inner self. I don't care if someone believes in God. I don't care if someone believes in the, in the table yeah, here. The if they, if they have the something. Yeah. Um, and it's not about going up a mountain and meditating in your yeah. suit. You have yeah. to have a real life experience, yeah. mind, body and soul. The, yeah. the body is the joyful doing it. Yeah, yeah. And from doing this, it's really kind of getting people to go, it's okay if you screw up. Yeah. But yeah. There, we'll be here to catch you. Yeah, don't, co don't cover it up. Don't cover it up. <laughs> yeah. L lying, ego. You know, it's, it's fear. It's fear. Yeah. It's yeah. fear. In saying that, moving into your business, when you were writing the book, yeah. were you writing this in such a way that, that it was really you or was it who you thought or you wanted to be? That's a really deep question. And it's, and it's ironic you should answer that because the name of this book that was launched in January is How to Be a Better Deal Closer. Yeah. And I was standing outside waiting for this t to meet, meet, meet you today. I had a coffee and I, I, a thought came to my head. Somebody's probably going to write this now, but I thought maybe the next book should be How to Be Me. Instead yeah. of how to be a better deal closer, how to be me. Because that kind of is what I was doing when I wrote that. I wanted to unravel from a professional perspective what I'd done, you know, and try and identify how I'd – because I've done some amazing things. I've unraveled, you know, multi-hundred million dollar contracts and launched a watch company and done this and that. And, you know, I've got the world's number one leadership thinker endorsed. You know, there's a video from Marshall endorsing the work that I do. How did I do that? Somebody who's spent his life being so fearful, you know. Um, so I, tr I tr tried to put a methodology around it. But, but um, really, some, uh, really interestingly, there's a, a book publicist in California and we were potentially doing some work together, but it hasn't worked out at this point. And she made a really good observation that I hadn't thought about. So this is a, you know, 150 page for business owners and small business people. It's a template for really, you know, how you go about growing business and getting deals. But what she said, and it's great, and it's pretty simple. I like to turn complex things as simple, but she said the real power of it, and now I've latched onto it, and she's right, is you open the book, and it's a bit like that wardrobe in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The book is like that. You open it. And when you read it, you realize it answers – it asks so many questions that it answers and they're all about the human stuff. You can teach deal closing. You can – some shonky you sales salesperson would say you can buy an algorithm for it, but that's rubbish. It's all about the human stuff. Yeah, it's the it's F2F, all, F face to face. It it's is. It's a human connection. Yeah. But, but when, so that's really why I wanted to do it and that's where my life journey is going now. It's uh, the door – a bit like you. You talk about the conscious leadership and business. For me, it's about – the door's open now into Narnia. 
I now know there are questions. C- correct me if I'm wrong. Like people, when they see it, they think it's a sales book. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but absolutely. But it's but it's more than that. It's way it's more. It's way that. more. It's yeah. not a sales book. If I were to write it again, and there may be another edition, it may be how to be me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and it's it's the genuine. People can smell fakeness. I, absolutely. I always believe if there's something. Yeah subconsciously in your mind picking up something yeah, and yeah. someone and people can smell desperation yeah, as well yeah, so when you're going into something you have to yeah. kind of go yeah let it be there's always insecurity there's always an element of security. I mean to, uh, to go back to your question yes there was an element of there was an element of insecurity when I wrote it as well I wanted to shout out to the world and say how great I am and, and to, to an extent you know to an extent I did because we all want to be noticed you know but 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 having got the feedback these last six months and having had a few breakthroughs as well, including meeting you and Joseph and others, for me, I've kind of moved beyond that. I'm really interested in all those self-awareness, situational awareness. How do we get confidence? How do we communicate? All those things. That's what really fascinates me. What I've learned myself in life, the only real thing that holds everybody back in this world is self-worth, yep. self-confidence yeah. in themselves. Yep. Because they... That's it. That's, you know, there yep. is the bottom line. And that's fear. To, it's fear. Yeah, it's fear. To, as I said before, yeah. you know, that is the bottom line between if you look at me, you, yep. anyone in the station, anyone downstairs, it, it boils down to that. And that has been inbred into us yep. from everything in our lives. Absolutely. TV, radio, teachers, yeah. education. Yeah. You, you know, you have to do this unless you want to get this and, yeah. and that drive, drive, drive on yeah. it. Yeah, I was just listening to the radio this morning and I was talking, you know, we all know that it's easier for parents to say, no, you can't do that. It's in our culture. It's in the Western culture to say to your kids, no, you can't do that more than tell them what they can do. We still are not very good at telling kids what they can do. It's you sound default. like your dad. Yeah. No, you're like your dad. You're like your mother. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's because yeah, yeah. you're picking yeah, yeah. that up yeah. on, on a different level. Oh, it's it, The whole thing is just, I mean, I'm just early stage in this, but there's so much in this stuff and it's so exciting, you know. It's amazing what, you know, transpires, but I, I guess, you know, back back to that whole subject around where I'm at and I think three words, and I came up with these yesterday. I was talking at the tech summit there and, I came off the stage and three words struck me and they're what I, what I feel passionate that's bubbling up inside me is communicating, influencing and connecting. I've always done those. I've always had an ability to do, that, do those, but I've, I've kind of I lost touch with all that stuff. I thought that was all irrelevant. I, I thought having qualifications of being a hot shot this and hot shot, but it's communicating, influencing, connecting. Influencing, there's a difference between persuading Persuading can be through negative channels, so you can persuade through language and stuff, but your influence, I like to think of it authentic influencing, you know. It's about people, you know, what I like to say, what, what I say is you don't have a leader unless they have followers. And yeah, I'm talking, lead from the front. Yeah. That's it, yeah. So Care. Care. It's caring. And it's, and it's doing the right thing. Yes, it's leading doing it's, the right is, thing. Is, is that it? Do, do we need to really, in industry and in corporate, Start to care. You know, one yeah. of the things that I go through when, I, when in my coaching problems when I work with, with my clients is really getting them to be unique of what they do yeah. and also to have that, find out that passion and desire that they have. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. to care for the people that you're doing work exactly, for. Yeah. Care for them and yeah, get yeah. them to care for yeah, the people yeah. they're doing work yeah, for because yeah. that is a care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody on one of the courses I gave recently and the feedback he gave probably the deepest and the most meaningful for me. It was something like, I can't remember the exact words, but it was, Simon, you're, you're, because I'm very honest and open when I do that. I want to marry you. (laughs) No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Never had that one. So so I'm very open when I do programs, when I do workshops and stuff. And I like to share my experiences because the human touch is really important. And for some audience, it doesn't work, but for the right audience, it does. And and this, and it was a guy and he came back and said, Simon, your honesty in self-reflection, because I was talking about failures and regrets and doubts and stuff is very unusual for somebody in your position. But I found it really inspiring, you know, because we all have those doubts. I, I, I believe... It's, as you know, I, I do some work for uh, the local enterprise board yeah. and 
I did a talk for them. There was a three hour talk there recently. And someone said to me in the audience afterwards, he says, you gave it everything. You yeah. didn't hold back. I've heard about that talk. You know, and I've had universally great yeah, but, news about but, it. But but it's and that's what I, I do. Have. I I you give give everything. You give I give. Yeah, that's the key. You know, now you'll get you, you you personally may and should get stuff back. But if you're giving, you're more likely to get stuff. Yeah, but back. I just gave. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not asking for. And I gave all. You know, there's no secrets or whatever. No, this no, is, no. Just, look, this is it's painting by numbers. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah. It's on it. I, I feel like that about the book and the seven P's. Like anybody can just take it off the web, buy it, buy it, and copy it and do their own deal making, deal closing methodology. Yeah, no, I've called it the, the seven D's now. <laughs> seven D's. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the more don't wisdom, tell don't tell Simon. Don't tell Simon. Simon. Don't tell yeah. Simon. <laughs> but the more we. We all do this stuff and share. The, the less fearful we're going to feel, because community, nobody, in, nobody, collective consciousness, nobody owns any information. No, <laughs> no, and we, it, it's we learn from other people, absolutely, and then we learn from other people, yeah, and we yeah. take bits, you know, from what people have learned, absolutely, what we've learned, and then we put it in our own words, and we map it together, you yeah. map it together on yeah. it. What's the future for yourself? Well, I'm going to keep doing the the deal closing stuff, and I love facilitating and working with uh, with because you love training, don't you? I do love training, and I love facilitating, and I, you know, I work with I've worked with Trinity and Queens up in Belfast and Manchester University of Dubai and and companies. I love facilitating and training. I'm starting to enjoy a little bit of the now the keynote speaking. I'm starting with small groups. But but and I used to be fearful of that because I, I remember you were said you were fearful of talking and let that out to other people. But I think no baby steps. No, I agree, and I'm getting there. And I, I now I'm realizing why I was fearful because I was always acting. I said before to you before, and I wasn't really connecting with what I'm saying. But when you feel what when you when you know it's you it comes from inside your heart. It, it and does. You just when you're there, it's like I don't have personally. I don't have notes. I don't do slides, powerpoints. I yeah. Just, Start off at something, and it just goes law. Yeah, I, I noticed that about you, and I was always envious of that. But I'm, but but now I'm starting to see that. Now I still have the PowerPoint there, and occasionally look at it. But so that that will continue, uh, and I, I still do some business consulting stuff. I think I'll keep writing stuff. I have a passion for writing and sharing, particularly around all these areas of self awareness and stuff. But, you, but you're, you're you're a great facilitator, and uh, you know the reason I love why I, I have you on as well is people say good things about you, and you're a great trainer. Thanks. You know, that's where you are. On Thanks. It. It's yeah. funny when I hear that. It's still hard to accept praise. You know, even somebody who's on this journey. You know, yeah. so imagine what it's like for people who are a long way away from this self-enlightenment journey. Yeah. It's not easy. What's the best business advice that you've ever received? Ooh, there's a few. Um, I think M Michael Dell, my, I think the one that comes to my head first, Michael Dell, a, a great inspirer within within that business and a very simple one. It was, and his quote was, don't, I don't know whether it was his or not, but he used it, don't perfume the pig, which means if as an employee you have bad news, don't lie to your boss. Tell the bad news. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> don't perfume the pig. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's, I haven't heard that one before. So don't perfume the don't pig. Don't perfume the pig. Don't yeah. Put, yeah. Can't, yeah. What's the other one? Lipstick on a pig. That's the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what book would you recommend for someone to read? Not your own, but a book that you would recommend. I think uh, definitely, and I only just, uh, apologies to Marshall, considering I've been a coach of his three years and he's done a couple of forwards to my books and a video, but... His book, Triggers, I read that probably six months ago. I should have read it three years ago. I found that really powerful. Okay. Shout out if someone wants to get one of your books or work with you, give us your website and yeah, so, your profile and stuff. Well, I think the, the easiest way is to contact me, Simon, uh, at... Uh, at uh, expertdealcloser.com or simon at simonhaig, H-A-I-G-H dot com. The book, How to Be a Better Deal Closer, is available on Amazon. Um, I think that's probably that's probably it. I know that. Yeah. What song would you like us to play it with? Uh, uh, this was my th the first song I ever bought as a 10-year-old, Under, Under the Moon of Love by Shawadi Wadi. Beautiful. We will play that. Simon Haig, thank you for coming on to Break Your Bands. It's great to talk to you. 